<laughs> hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, May 26, 2019. And welcome to It Comes Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, episode number 13 of season 11, also known as Reunited. And it feels so meh. meh. <laughs> and happy Memorial Day weekend to you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. All right. So for those of you that are just tuning in for some reason at the reunion episode of COL's <laughs> Drag Race Time, uh, there are two fabulous co-stars that host this little podcast shindig. Uh, my name is Gary and with me is... Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Let's, let's, let's talk about this reunion. Shall we? Mm. Shall we? Yeah, it's something. All right. So... <laughs> Our normal segments are not normal anymore because it's the reunion, so we don't have challenges. But we do have other things that we want to talk about. So, of course, I don't really have my normal setup. I'm obviously like uh, kind of on a little holiday getaway with friends, so I'm trying to like do this on the fly. Hence, playing shit on a phone and crap. <laughs> so, no musical cue. But this category is serving looks stunting pretty. Queen's War. What? <laughs> yeah. So 15 gal pals come back to the stage of the Orpheum Theater in Los Angeles with RuPaul as the host. So RuPaul Andre Charles decides to moderate questions in that. And all the girls turn up in new outfits for the mm -hmm. reunion. Mm-hmm. Damon, what were your thoughts on some of the uh, the look choices? Yeah, so I I said curious looks, and this is kind of a. So I got a chance. I got I did actually watch the um, um, fashion photo review because I kind of wanted to see that because all the queens are on stage. You don't really get a chance to see everything like full on. So I wanted to watch the photo review because I wanted to kind of get a better look at what they were wearing. And I just found some things a little curious. Just a little like, huh, what 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 prompted this idea? So and unfortunately mm -hmm. my first one actually goes to um one of our favorites and that's Miss Nina West with her little sock monkey um throw. <laughs> I don't quite know what it was. <laughs> but it was it was cute and funny, but it, I just it's like that that I don't okay. Like I guess it works. I mean, I don't know if it was part of the dress or not. It looked like a very nice um, structured, like, top and um, skirt, like a jacket and skirt combination. That one was a bit, like a business suit. Um, and then there was the, you know, outfit, kind of the monkey, sock monkey something. I, again, I don't know if it was like a boa, if it was a throw, if it was like a part of the actually like sewn into the the garment i don't quite know but whatever it was i was like okay um i also felt that vanji's look was a little mm, simple Banji? Ba yeah banshee <laughs> um and there were a few others uh oh gosh off the top of my head i wasn't a fan of scarlet's look it just seemed very green for the sake of green like it didn't have anything to do with anything did you not catch the subliminal thing that she was doing probably not she's no. green with envy oh god <laughs> i know i told jim and ronnie and they were like oh like it was so funny the moment i saw it, i knew instantly what she did i was like oh look she's green with envy because her oh. hair is green and her outfit's green and all that girl okay <laughs> but again um <laughs> and another one like this is kind of a um as we i think we what well, we talked about earlier today i feel like one of the things that makes me realize this is definitely after the finale has aired because everyone seems very like relaxed and casual ish like including someone like 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 evie who's pretty much wearing like a bathrobe and while it was you know, fun ish with the with the cowl on her head with the bubbles and the rubber duckies kind of thing. It was definitely her odd like sense of style. 
the the robe essentially and i can't i think she had some kind of like slipper heel on to kind of go with it or maybe she wasn't wearing feet i don't know i can't remember but you know it's just one of these things where like just things that caught me off guard i'm just very curious about some of the things that people wear and again this is the reunion so it's not the you know the finale where you you're like on stage and showing how much you've grown since the show this is just like we're all here we're all together like right da 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 la 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 i'm not expecting major things although i particularly loved um um not scarlet sugar's look i love akira's look um i liked raja's look um that's really it off the top of my head that's it for me okay gary how about you um i said uh to borrow from another show on youtube there are some toots some newts and some boots oh uh yeah so um soju uh, it's a new like it was this it, very interesting blonde dominatrix kind of look mm -hmm. fishnet with like uh over the elbow latexy type gloves uh black mm -hmm. gown kind of like uh satin kind of drape like but it was more like huge pantaloons than anything <laughs> Sorry, I just um, read. I yeah. just read uh, Mark's comment in the chat. Yeah, um, Kahana Montrese. Uh, no, girl. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't know what you're doing. Like, it's it looks like spacey kind of other stuff, but it wasn't really working for me. So, uh, it was like weird web stuff on the legs and like galaxy uh -huh. type stuff all over the place, and uh, I don't know. No. Uh, now, Honey Davenport, I actually pretty much liked overall. It was very like superhero kind of like mm -hmm. cartoon, maybe like glam villain. Uh, reminds me, of course, a lot. I think most people go with Storm because she's a queen of color. And Storm as a character is, you know, a woman of color as a superhero with like this white hair. But I really like that black like mm -hmm. effect with the winding through in the hair. Um, I just really love how she's doing this whole like golden black consistency to her theme. Things are a lot uh -huh. about bees, about honey, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I wasn't mad about that. Um, I really kind of like that. Uh, Mercedes Amon Diamond. No girl. Um, like I wasn't a fan of the outfit. It looks very like almost like it's a kind of dance number reveal thing. Uh, the fringe technically being red in certain light and pink and other light was very annoying uh, <laughs> to me because on camera at certain points, it looked like it was red and pink and I couldn't figure out why. And then I realized it was because of the way the spotlight might hit it. Oh um, God. And then like silver diamond shoes with that outfit. Okay. Like, it's just, no. And the hair, the Farrah Fawcett kind of swept hair. And I, I, this is a read for all the girls. I was not happy during the reunion that over here on her right side, she had a piece of hair that kind of like was doing an alfalfa number and sticking out. It wasn't <laughs> sticking with the rest. Not Scarlet, not Soju, not no bitch behind or near her who looked at her hair ever said, oh, girl. Like, nobody took their hand and just kind of like, no, <laughs> nobody helped her. Get look some like, hairspray. Yeah, look like a mess. It was Fix a problem. That Fix yeah. that shit. I was Fix like, it. No, no, no. Fix it. Yeah, I was not happy <laughs> about that. Um, I was not a fan of uh, Ariel Versace, so hers is kind of a boot. Like this weird, like uh, beige pleather, leather <laughs> with something. Uh, no, and then no. the hair was like the hair's cute, but the hair's the wrong color, girl. It's way too soft pink to go with that palette. Like it just, I, I would have expected mm -hmm. a really bold color. So for a woman who owns a wig business. I'm surprised she didn't pick up brighter color. <clears throat> well, so, she wears she wears what she wants to wear. Yeah, she's from uh, Jersey. That's nice. Now for Scarlet Envy, overall, I think it's I think it's a two. The thing for me about this is, well, no, I take that back. Boot those shoes because uh, they're <laughs> like this weird gold kind of color. Like 
they don't match the outfit at all. But I like the outfit and the hair. I think she looks beautiful in green. I have no issue with this. Lighting is a bitch, though, because I bet you in a natural light, that dress and that hair go really well together. But on film, like on camera, sometimes it wasn't looking so hot. Like the dress mm. looked like it was an olive brown, like olive yeah. green kind of drab Maybe color. That's what it was for me. And I was like, no, girl, like, you know, but in camera, like in still photos, it looks better, but it's still not the same vibrancy as the hair. So yeah, I guess I'll call it more of a newt than a toot. Um, and then Raja O'Hara. Uh, yeah, you technically can't go wrong with a purple sequin pantsuit, but come on. Like, it's <laughs> like purple, 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 purple. Like, and you are not purple rain girl. So let's just be honest about it. So uh, I'm going to call it a, I'm going to call it a newt because it looked okay. It wasn't great. Uh, but boot them shoes. No, like them clear, like sandal things, whatever. No, boot the shoes, boot the house down. I'm sorry. Uh, plastic tiara. Uh, two. Head to toe, very Asian, obviously inspired, very easy to read, had no issues with it. Found the hair interesting. For a little while, I thought the black bands of hair were pool noodles, like really, really small ones, like plumbing oh, insulation or something, maybe. I couldn't quite figure it out, but I like I'm like, that would have been smart structuring though, if you like took that foam noodle kind of deal that was like, you know, around like your copper pipes at home. That mm -hmm. you buy at the supply store, and then you took the wig and you put the hair over it, yeah, to make those rows and stuff. So I, I, I don't know if that's what she did, but I thought, she, as usual, plastic did not disappoint. She looked amazing, in my opinion. Yeah, um, that whole that. So according to if we're you know you listen to the fashion photo review, apparently this is definitely a potentially a inspired by her Vietnamese heritage. It's possible. I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, I figured as much. It definitely. It looks very, I, I think it just is beautiful. All right. So sugar cane, we need to talk girl. Uh Oh, <sighs> I'm like really torn up about this. Look, I love the color. I like it from the waist up. I like the gloves, hate the hair and the pants are ill fitting. I just don't know what to do with you. Like, <laughs> The dark hair with a dark color is so problematic for me. I'm like, mm. are you are you trying to be like Kiss of the Spider Woman? Yeah. Because <laughs> like, that's kind of what I'm getting from this, but also very confusing because it feels so high glam and yet so dark. Like it just dark lady. Yeah, I I don't know. Like it's just it was bugging the shit out of me. Like and then what's worse is in one of the Instagram photos, she looks like Morgan McMichaels. Like, literally. <laughs> I looked at her and I was like, what the fuck is Morgan doing at the reunion? And I was like, oh my god, it's seriously sugar. I was like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, ugh, I don't know how I feel about that. And the thing about sugar is she probably made the outfit from scratch, which I'm very proud of her for, yet mm. I don't know, girl. Like, I would have liked to have seen a pop of color as a contrast. Mm. Like it was all very eggplant plum. Like it was very like poor, like deep purple and kind of dark and whatever. And the hair just kind of like mal mal matches to the shadows and the fabric. Like it just, it's not, no, I would have preferred like something else. Like, you know, what have been amazing, which sugar probably would never do bald. Oh God. Hmm. Possibly, possibly, but she's not bald normally. So, Right. So, so yeah, I don't know. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then, as, as you said, Nina West, uh, had this very strange rap thing. Sock monkeys. Yes. I don't know what to do about that. The red leather outfit is fun. I see that the turtleneck and the belt kind of like whatever, or the top underneath is the same material as the sock monkeys. So I get where maybe some of that inspiration is coming from. The hair was an okay. amazing structure thing. Uh huh. So I was so one of the first things I saw, and I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna say it is, I literally said Nina looking like Eureka up in that top, like because I think that's about where it Eureka was, like was sitting, or whatever. Yeah, with the with the hair, the way it looked, the way it was structured, so like, like helmet almost. I'm not that's I'm not trying to be mean, but it just it definitely wasn't a movable, you know. But it just it hit me very much at one point that I was like, oh, well, there's Eureka. Like that's a very like. Yeah. Yeah. So 
No, I mean, she looked really good. I was just slightly confused. Uh, mm -hmm. so I, if it was me, I would give it a newt. Uh, Miss Vanjie, I actually want to toot this because I thought it was amazing. I was like, oh, look at you. Like, like being Vanjie, <laughs> yet like, like high fashion. Like you are tanned the house down. Like spray tan, <laughs> like nobody's business. Wearing them hooker, like strap, crazy heels, like up over the knee. Mm -hmm. uh, showing off and perhaps uh, this is not meant to be a spoiler, but we'll discuss it later. I'm sure uh, was showing off for a reason mm. like for sexiness or whatever. I actually mm. like her this dark. I like her makeup. I think look better than it did on the season. I think she softened it a little, like made some changes. Uh, the fact that she went with that, like that crazy neon lime green kind of like faux foxtail, you know, uh, extra piece I thought was, um, yeah, I thought it was uh, interesting. So, hey, Eric, it's okay. We're just discussing the outfits. Um, <laughs> Miss Sakiria. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> so this to me, her look to me, honestly, is very much a, um, like almost like a throwback to like, kind of hollywood glam kind of like drag queen pageant it's a bit of mix of both with the you know the uh, feathers that kind of go down one side and on the arm and then the, the high slit like she definitely like she definitely knows how to show off her assets pun totally intended here like mm -hmm. she knows her shape she knows her body um i don't know if she has anything up here I don't think she does, but you know, whether she's a breastplate or whatever she has on, I'm or the pretty sure the it's loose. a breastplate. Yeah, so she it's knows a, how to like. It's got a neck thing, fabric yeah. wise, that she's I think covering up something. So it works really well. So she does a really good job of making sure everything is kind of cut and put together. I don't hate it. I think we've, as we, I think what I've learned at least so far is that blue tends to be a color she gravitates towards, which. It's okay in some points, but not always. And this one was it's it's complimentary to her skin. Mm -hmm. Like like everything in the blue family probably will do good for her. Like if mm -hmm. it's too dark of a blue, it may not show well. Yeah. But like this has got teal feathers and blue feathers. It's like very azure blue. Like, I mean, it's it's nice, but I think the problem that I have is that the fabric is weird. It looks kind of like tiger stripes. Mm -hmm. but not and that's the part where i'm like why are you taking a showgirl and turning her into a hooker like i don't <laughs> that's where my problem is like it looks glamorous but it looks cheap glamorous i'm i don't know like it, it's but yet it's really beautiful and she or you know her face is painted the hair looks good i mean it's just it's problematic i'm just like uh, like i like you and i kind of like the outfit but like for the reunion i don't know um, you know, Mark said in the live chat about it being old showgirl classic drag. I'm like, mm, yeah, I mean, it, actually, it is very much to me like along those lines. That's what it, it like harkens back to, yet it's a little new. Um, so I mean, it's okay. I'm not, <laughs> I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. Now, Brooklyn Heights. Uh, the moment she appeared, I was like, oh, well, hello. Like Norma Desmond meets Annie Lennox meets like, <laughs> like fashion something, you know, I mean, I was like, wow, I was really, uh, taken by it. It's very striking. This is huge black sequin cape with a red liner. Um, I don't know how I feel about glitter MC hammer pants. <laughs> Really, girl? Like, I know that you're a dancer and on all that, and maybe you did it because you wanted to be comfortable because you knew you're going to be sitting in chairs and on camera for hours. But yeah, now, I would, now is the time I would have been happy actually with a tuxedo pant. I think mm -hmm. I like the look. I think it was a little much, but I did like it. Um, the the cape thing was awesome. The top, like asymmetrical, not asymmetrical. But the hat kind of like the like you said the Norman Desmond like structured kind of and stuff. Look, oh yeah, structured look really good. From like here, like I agree with you. The pants were just a little, mm. like I'm not 
hating it, but I wasn't loving it. I would have liked it more to have, like you said, maybe a thinner pant, like a, not a thinner pant, but like a more, like a normal, like, like tight jean or not jeans per se, but like the same fabric, but just a little tighter to the thigh and, and what have you are a tight that goes into a higher boot, you know, Something along those lines. I would have been but fine. The, I would have been fine with like a four-way stretch black fabric that was not glitter, not sequins, maybe mm. satin that like looked like tuxedo. Do you know what I mean? Like even if you just a applied a stripe down the side, do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. To make it look yeah. good in that way. And then you know what you, you could around the bottom, you could put like a one inch band of that same fabric that the hat and the caper made out of. Mm -hmm. Like you just, accent it just a little bit but uh, i mean I, I i'm not a fan of the big h earring you know that was like constantly like hitting her chest and kind of flopping around because the hat <laughs> had the b you know Brooklyn yeah lynn heights i guess so um i loved the spit like applique hair you know wave that was applied to the face i was really like enamored by that it was it was very evocative it was very like striking and I appreciated mm -hmm. that I was like, well, look at what you brought to the goddamn table. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it just, and she was really playing with color because it was very cream skin, black, mm -hmm. gold, red. Like that's what we were dealing with. Like she had a primary palette of what she was working on. And so I kind of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Mark says, she was reclined and leaning all over the place, very comfortable leaning on the chair next to uh, her and throwing her foot in Silky's direction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, Silky. Mm. <laughs> huh? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Huh? Yeah. What the, what, what the actual fuck? I mean, at least she didn't wear like tan or black undergarments under. That's true. The thing, so you didn't see it, so you couldn't clock her for that. Right. I get that she has this like baton twirling, maybe majorette, whatever drum, you know, not drum, you know, rear guard, color guard, whatever background. We know that she's been able to do like the, again, the baton twirling bullshit that we, we've seen, we've heard about it, but. This was not the time for this outfit. I don't think this outfit was this was an appropriate outfit for say the reunion. I um, was I was thoroughly confused by it. I didn't understand. Like, and here's the thing. The reason why I'm confused is because it's really good. It just doesn't seem like the time and place. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like you're gonna lead the band, you're gonna <laughs> start the parade, you're like you're showing off your talent portion of the, I, mean, I don't, huh? Like it just, it was so confusing to me. It's a really good looking outfit. She looks pretty good in it. Like, I mean, I have no complaints about the look other than why. Why? <laughs> why? Yeah. I'm like, uh, no girl. Like it's for the reunion. I give it a boot, but otherwise it's good. Like, I just don't I understand. Damn. I don't agreed. I don't understand this. Like this would have been, I mean, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. I don't know again. I don't know what they're hap what's happening during the finale, but this looks very this looks like a very much like a performance outfit look that you're gonna go like like do a number in, you know, like who runs the world, you know, who's gonna, you know, one of those like like fun right. kicky high kick, whatever number. Granted, she can't really high kick. I don't know. And uh, as Eric pointed out, which I had not noticed before, those motherfucking pads could still be seen. And I just looked at a picture on Instagram and I was like, yep, there's an outline. <laughs> yep. See, this is so this is the problem sometimes with girls who are bigger. Okay. Let's let's just go into this like right right now. Um, bigger girls, like you sometimes you have to pad to look more fuller because it it it's the way it has to work that's the way it is like you can't just 
you know, because even though you're a big girl, you're still a technically a big boy and you don't have hips so much. You have some hip, but you don't have a lot of hip. I don't necessarily pay attention to this sometimes when I was doing drag, but whatever. Anyway. Right. Um, so you have the pad, but what most big girls tend to do is they Damon, you still there? Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, but you froze. Fuck me. What's going on with my I don't internet know. right now? Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you just fine. Okay. You were but fine. Anyway. You were just going on your rant about big girls in a pad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I was going to say what I was saying was um, what I was trying to say is that sometimes big girls, you have to find a way to hide it. You know, yes, sometimes you can do like the high, like bikini, basically, you know, cut of things, but that's going to show everything. So unless you are really good with hiding your pads, like really good, like tight, tight, tights, tights, then another tight, then a sparkle tight, then a fishnet tight, you know, kind of find some way to hide it you're going to end up seeing it no, almost no matter what. So most girls, I'll use Nina as an example, her pride look, the fact that it's a biker short, there's a reason probably for that. Mm -hmm. You know, because you saw the other outfit was definitely like a little bikini with the um, epaulets on the sides of the hips with the fringe. Um, yeah, like you, girls, big girls have to find a way to hide it. And and maybe that's not true for every big girl. I'm sure there are girls out there that know how to do it and do it well. Silky is not one of them. Right. As we've learned. Yeah. And I know someone mentioned her um, 30 pounds. Um, in, the, in the history of 11 plus seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, this is the first queen to ever claim that she gained weight during filming. Mm -hmm. And apparently she gained 30 pounds over six weeks mm -hmm. that's five pounds a week girl now well, am i saying am i saying that's impossible hell no because lord knows i put at least five pounds on in a week but mm -hmm. to do it week after week after week after week and then oh that's right honey you stopped filming last june and the reunion was just filmed in may so you've had 11 months to lose the 30 pounds that you gained for your pads to fit normal again so, and I'm not knocking it. If she kept the weight on, so be it. You know, we know people have weight problems. I get it. I totally get it. But you now have an opportunity, and apparently you had an opportunity during the show to change your pads because there was, as Nina has mentioned, there were pads everywhere. <laughs> like queens everywhere, there are pads everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could have, like, you could have done something about it. Yeah. Um. But again, like if you're used to your pads being a certain way, or if you are one of those girls that I know there are girls out there that put on that have a shape like a body shaper already made and they just put it on. Right. So if that's what you do, then okay, well, as you mentioned, if you've gained weight, then yeah. that's maybe not gonna work anymore. So you need to figure something else out. And if you don't know how to make pads or put pads together, I mean, they literally gave you guys pads in one of the, like the final <laughs> episode of the show. <laughs> Michelle made a point to mention, <clears throat> there are pads over there that were provided by one of their sponsors. Use those pads. Now, is I know Silky's a bigger girl, so it is entirely, entirely possible that they didn't have any available for her. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but enough about the pads. Well, enough about yeah. Silky. Um, yeah. So here's my thing. Uh, then we've got Evie Oddly. It's almost a shoot for me, except for them shoes. Mm. I don't understand why they're with this outfit other than the red. So this is a, like, I'm beautifying myself. So I have my hair all up in a towel. I got little rubber ducks. I got bubbles. I've got goop on my face because I'm giving myself a facial. I've got a robe on. It has my name embroidered, like, and spedangled on it. 
And then I'm wearing hooker heels. <laughs> huh? Girl, come on. I expected you to wear like slippers, like those poofy uh -huh. little ostrich feather, goofy, uh -huh. you know, heels, kitten heels, you know, for when you're like in a boudoir. I just, uh -huh. it, all of it was going well until I saw the shoe. Then I went, wait, what? No, girl. So, yeah, I, it was all over the place for me in terms of uh, what everybody was presenting, you know? So, red was obviously the major color because one, two, three, four, five of the girls are wearing it. Mm -hmm. And then one, two, three, four are wearing black. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, Scarlet stood out to me because she was the only one pretty much in green. Uh, Raja, unfortunately, in the back did not stand out as I think as much as I think she meant to in purple mm -hmm. uh, and sugar just got lost that dark, like eggplant kind you know, to plum mm -hmm. color. It just, it, it was like, no girl, that's not working. Um, but so yeah, there was that's <laughs> yeah, that's what they wore. <laughs> Moving on. Shall we? Sure. All right, so let it all hang out, Hunty. It's not untucked, but there were some topics that came up that were discussed. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Damon. Okay. I'm going to talk about the good one first, because I think it's very cute that this kind of got brought up, you know. Okay. Uh, the whole prior to season 11, we all love Miss Nina West. Um, I was very happy with this whole, the moment that she had with um, um, AOC, and uh, Rihanna and all that stuff. It just felt very good. I, what I wasn't a particularly big fan of was the whole basically kissing up to Rue, which I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's not really kissing up. I know Nina probably has a lot of respect in her heart for for RuPaul, but it felt kind of like kissing ass. You know, I, I appreciate her. Mm -hmm. At least it felt the way to me. Don't get me wrong, but this it just felt that way. Um, Having said that, I did love it. I did love the moment. I love that the queens still all seem to have a love for Nina. Um, I have it, I have no doubt in my mind that Nina will win Miss Congeniality. The only person I could see potentially beating her out of that might be, I hate to say it, Evie. I know it sounds silly, but despite the fact that she was very caustic, she was very truthful. Well, I could see Silky winning Miss Congeniality and then Evie calling it out and saying, no, fan favorite, not Congeniality. <laughs> she ain't fan favorite, though. I have mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I got nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, having said that, um, the next thing for me that was kind of a, a moment was the whole um, the instigator. So they were kind of pointing to Akira, but they were also kind of talking about Raja at this point. And it's one of these things where I was kind of like, well, you know, somebody's going to have to say something. And if nobody's saying anything, then you kind of don't get much on the show. Like, and if right, it I was just going to say, somebody, it, it, somebody got to have loose lips. Yeah. And if it ain't going to be them, it's going to be like a producer saying something to somebody who's then going to say it to somebody else. It's just the way, it, that's the way it is. Girl, we know this. We have seen this show enough to know that there, there is some quote unquote manufactured drama. We know that for a fact. Um, this uh, episode was no different, but the whole like, I love that they called out Akira for being like an instigator in a sense, but I'm also like, but she, was she saying anything wrong? Was she doing anything that was out of place? As he mentioned, although I kind of was over this whole like talking about plastic in her history kind of backstory bullshit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm still confused about all of that. And, you know, it becomes very clear like, I love that they gave us playbacks because the thing that I saw mm -hmm. is not what Miss Akira was saying. Mm -hmm. Akira was saying Raja said something to her first. 
that's not what we saw in the in the in the like untucked that they showed again. No, that was you walked over to her and said something to her. I know you two were both in the bottom in that episode, but it was still one of these ones I was like, you that's not what you was that's not what happened, girl. Like, and we got the video like right here. Like play record like like <laughs> we can play this back and i i mean okay from what i remember and could be wrong because it's just my memory but it looked like raja was already away on her um iTunes, ipod, iPod, yeah. iPod listening to the song and you walk over and interrupt her that's not what you said mm -hmm. and that's kind of where my like moment where they kind of, because she kind of kept going back and she kept trying to defend herself. And I feel like keep, I love you, Akira, but you need to shut up. Like you need to stop digging this hole because we know, <laughs> we, we can see it like right here. <laughs> so don't play this game of, I don't, I didn't instigate that. No, you, you did. So, but again, you needed it. I think the show needs someone like that. It's one of the things I liked about Akira. Her, um, <laughs> her like confessionals were were on point the entire season. Like loved it, all of them, because they were good. Like she she's funny and hilarious, and it's just something that I've been a big I was a big fan of hers. Um, but what I I disliked, especially in this episode was her not kind of owning up to it fully like own it own that you were i mean intentional or not you were an instigator plain and simple like but, but okay so my devil's advocate argument is but why would she not own it does she have something to lose by being a bitch i don't know does she potentially look bad in the world's view, if she if she owned it, I could guess, it but... could it be that she makes it to top two? Mm. And now we're playing politics because we're trying to mm. save face in front of the camera. Because mm. if this was recorded after the finale, then you already know who made it to top two. Hmm. You're making me think. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I think there's a reason that Kiri oh. was, you know, kind of behaving the way she was. I agree with Mark. He said, I love that Scarlet called out Akira for her non-apology apology. Yep. I mean, some of that, I was just like, I was like, yep, that's not an apology, girl. Like, <laughs> it's not a... I love I'm the 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 phrase for people now is I'm sorry you were feeling that way. No, 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 no. That is not that immediately negates the apology. Right. You don't you don't apologize for someone else's feelings. You apologize for what you did. Yes. You apologize for facts. Mm -hmm. As we discovered earlier today, for the truth. Because <laughs> someone else is being honest with you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, Mark says fear. She don't want to be the bad guy by being the truth teller. She hated Evie because she spoke the truth and took the backlash. Uh, I mean, I can understand that concept. Like, oh, no, no. Let, let her have the role. Let Evie be the one who gets all the, you know, the heat for being authentic. Yeah. You know, agreed. or being real or 100 mm -hmm. or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Agreed. So. Interesting. Hmm. 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 Now you got to make me think. Now you're making me think. See, Gary, I'm telling you. Well, because you and I already discussed off, off. You know, when we weren't live about the fact, I brought up that uh, when Shay and Sasha and them were on, it was super obvious uh -huh. to me that they'd filmed after it was over because mm. of how people were talking and stuff. I felt like there was very much a, like, I ain't got shit to lose now. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I will, I will be honest. I will be open. I will be forthright because fuck all y'all. <laughs> Someone, oh, it was during the, so I, so one of the things you want to watch is the behind the scenes of the finale, which is where you kind of figure out what maybe they did record this afterwards. Cause one of the things they mentioned, um, 
they talk about like one of their favorite like reunited moments and it's um from season nine with with um um Sasa and 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 oh her name just left my head you just said it too Shay hey. fuck yeah and just how um um Va not Valentina's going at um Shay and Va um Shay goes I'm not I, I I'm not I'm not mad at all like like you don't need do to I look angry. mad to you do I look mad to you and just I'm just like Yes, bitch. Say so. I agree. With, like that was that was like there was this like say had the like like do you think this is bad? Like like this like say was queen of say. No, she was empress of shade during that reunion. She was having none of it, <laughs> and I loved it. And and uh, shit. Her name just went out of my head. Awesome. Um, Aja was right by her, like handing over the scepter and the crown. Like she <laughs> yeah. was in her court, totally yeah. like supported. Like, yes, yes, mama, yes, mama, I am in your house. Like I am a part of yeah. this royal court because she was yes. like, nay, nay, no, no. Um, Ro, Ru called out the breakdown Akira had and where that came from. Akira was having a moment and a day she knew she was going home. Mm. <laughs> Shay had no fucks left to give that day. Very, very true. Yeah, yeah. Say was like, whatever, bitch. <laughs> like, I know where I'm at. Like, <laughs> right. And I think Evie delivered a little bit of that. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, anything else for you on topics, David? Uh, oh gosh. Um, no. All right. How about you? Uh, so, speaking of Evie, I said one of the topics for me was Evie serving tea. She was very well maintained, but had moments where she kind of attacked a little. And she mm -hmm. also had some emotional moments. And I thought she uh -huh. walked this amazing balancing act between like surfing face and like maintaining composure, but also mm -hmm. like getting angry at certain moments oh, and telling yeah. people how she honestly felt and how things were said that hurt her feelings. And I thought it was really well done. I was like, yeah. I, I'm not gonna say that she was lying and acting, but if she was like, girl give you the award mm -hmm. so i was I, that, I loved her reaction to the whole you know raja calling her basically calling her stanky like smelly and whatever and she was just like that shit hurt my feelings like you know mm -hmm. better and again we had that again one of those non-apology apologies bullshit well i'm sorry you felt that one like no 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 <laughs> like own your words. I get that you were upset because you were at this point in the game that you knew you were gone because you knew you were gone. Um, but that gave you no reason to to go to that go to that level. Mm -hmm. Like, and you, we know you said it because lights, camera, action bitch like right <laughs> they caught that shit well and that's one of the things i think that a lot of the girls brought up like in a general topic discussion which was oh so now that we're done and we're all back home and we're all watching the season air now i find out what you bitches were saying behind my back mm -hmm. every single one of you like understandably scarlet raja like a bunch of them had like criticisms and stuff thrown in their face at the same time mm -hmm. like like, oh, I see how it is. This is how you really felt about this, that, and the other. And I kind of, like, like I think, if I recall correctly, Soju kind of came forward and was like, I was not here for the season. So I was surprised to see some of the things, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It came to the defense a little bit, I think, of Plastique and some others. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, very much so. Um, so I like the fact that e Evie was serving tea, you know, during this, just like she has all season long. I thought she was very much like true to herself. The only other thing that I want to talk about is wig gate. <laughs> and I want to talk about it because I understand it. I got no, I, I don't care anymore about it. I, I conceptually understand the timeline of how everything played out and people seem to be confused and people are upset. And I'm like, what is there to be confused and upset about? So here's the breakdown. Break it down for me. Ariel goes home. Okay. She is, you know, sashay away. So she uh -huh. goes back to the workroom and she goes to pack up all her shit. Prior to being sashayed away, 
already she had taken some of her wigs and moved and put them in a different area. When she was packing, she's emotional. She forgets to go over to this other section and grab the wigs. Mm -hmm. The wigs she left behind that were not the red one for Silky or the one for Plastique. Mm -hmm. She left all the other wigs by accident. She goes home. She's emotional. She doesn't unpack her shit for a couple weeks. She's busy. She got stuff to do. She like eating lots of ice cream, crying in bed, whatever <laughs> her stuff is. Okay. Yeah. Then she unpacks her stuff and goes, oh, hell's bells. I left some fucking wigs behind. Mm -hmm. Now, as we discussed greatly last night when we were watching Reunited Jeff, Ronnie and I, <laughs> queens cannot be trusted. And I don't say that as a generalization to say that every queen that's out there is a, a, is a conniving, thieving bitch. However, you leave shit behind. Do not be surprised that you never see it again. <laughs> so, Back. Back. <laughs> right. And so the, the like one of them was like, so you're telling me they're all liars and they're all thieves. And I was like, well, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, but, all, it, it's, it's what crime of opportunity. Is that a thing? Mm. Like, <laughs> like, like here it is. Right. Like, so. Long story short, Ariel's gone home. She's watching the show. She never says anything. Uh, no, that's not true. She comes back for the makeover challenge. All right, mm -hmm. this is the timeline. So she goes home. In the meantime, Plastique says, we were best Judies. She gave me all the wigs. And uh, Silky was like, I only have the one wig that Ariel left me with a note. All the rest of the girls decide to like take some wigs. Raja apparently has a wig walk into her stuff <laughs> on its own, as we found out in the reunion. So then you get to the makeover challenge. Queens are making over queens. Ariel for the camera, I think, adds a little spice to the fact that the wigs are gone. And I uh -huh. think the reason why Ariel was upset is because most of the wigs that she left behind, she could see in the room, but notably one of them was definitely gone. And that probably was the purple one that Raja took. Mm -hmm. And Ariel may not have really wanted Raja to have one of her wigs. So I could mm -hmm. see where she might be a little spicy about that. Yeah. But then the next day while they're doing filming is when they're getting their faces painted by their, by their still competing queen. And everyone uh -huh. starts talking about it, and Ariel realizes it's not that big a deal. Like, the, the wigs have been gone. They are gone. I'm not going to get them back. So what? why would I care anymore? Now, the problem is, in the meantime, Plastique has already run her mouth and said, well, she left all the wigs to me. And then Plastique stepped in it by accidentally saying or whatever that maybe some of you girls really could use them. Mm. Right. So all of that shit's going on. So that's where it seems a little weird that on one day she's super hot about this topic. And then the next day she's kind of like, eh, it's not that big a deal. And it's really only one week that I really care about. And it's gone. So all the girls, the remaining girls are kind of like, what the fuck girl? Like, so then you keep forwarding in regular time. And now the season is airing. So at this moment, Ariel sees that Plastique says on camera, well, she's my best Judy and I left them behind. So Ariel goes on her Twitter and says, I did leave those weeks for Plastique. So Plastique lies. Ariel supports the lie when the episode airs months and months later. Mm -hmm. Shame on Plastique and shame on Ariel. Yes. So that's really kind of the timeline. In the end... Yeah. You fucked up. You left your wigs behind. You were you were mad at yourself for doing it. Then you get the chance to go back and you think, oh, I might be able to get my wigs back. I ain't getting my wigs back. Well, fuck. <laughs> oh, and maybe the one wig she liked the most is the one that walked out the door or rolled out the door or whatever the hell it did. Grew legs, jumped into some suitcase, whatever. And then it gets thrown at you at the reunion. Okay. Because we're classy that way. Of course we are. I just think it was hilarious. I love that Silky was kind of like the whole backpedaling thing. Cause I agree. Like the way that the way that Ariel was talking during the reunion. Now, this is during the reunion. Right. It seemed to me that she was saying things that happened that she was doing while the show was airing, not realizing that she was back on the show to have an opportunity to talk about her wigs. Like, I don't know if like she failed to remember that or she was just like, cause the way Ariel, when she's on during the episode was making it sound like was that she, 
she was upset, but she wasn't upset, but she played the role of upset to for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. But then, like online, and everything else was like, "Yeah, I did it." And then she clips she talks about that the whole tweet with about Plastique, and she says, "Oh, I did that because I didn't want Plastique to lose favor on the show." But the show's already recorded, and so you guys already know, like, what ha happened. You well, know? <laughs> you know some of what happened. I think yeah. what they didn't know is what was going to be aired true so you don't know what's really going to make the edit what's going to make the cut and then once you see it you're kind of like and i think ariel was like people already have it out for plastique i'm not going to let them gang up on her because of the hair thing uh -huh. i think i'm going to just turn around and say screw it and yeah. leave it as is so mm -hmm. i think what they didn't realize is that plastique told a lie ariel fucked up she left her wigs plastique told a lie then ariel told a lie to support plastique's lie and in the end they all look bad end yeah. of story yeah and then Raja throws a wig across the stage. Whatever. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's like this. No, 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 no. So. I thought that was kind of tacky and tasteless. I will just own that. I think it was a stupid move. I got that it got a laugh everyone, but really reality is um, we all know this. Those wigs aren't cheap. Well, and then I loved how Silky turns around and pulls out the mega stunt of the line and says, well, girl, we all took wigs because we know you got this business and we wanted to spread the word and support you. <laughs> and I was like, shade. That was shady because I was like, I doubt very highly if you walked around and passed out fucking business cards or website addresses and said, go to this place to get these wigs from Ariel. Doubt it, honey. No. As Mark says, <laughs> act a fool, girl, act a fool. Act a fool. Um, that's what they did. So, yeah. Yes. So those were the topics. Uh, you ready to move on? Sure. All right. So we're still going to do snaps and eye rolls, high points and low points, things that we, uh, that were the hits and misses, things that we liked. So, <laughs> Damon, what are you giving snaps fours in the Yes. In the so my snaps are actually to, again, to Miss Nina West for her. <laughs> awesome, awesome fucking read to Miss Soju. I thought it was A plus. Like, I don't know if she had someone write it for her. I don't care. It was I worth every care. penny she spent. It was worth if, every fucking penny. If she paid somebody for that joke that ended the entire show of the of for the reading portion, she deserved yes. every penny every she spent on that. It. Whether she spent twenty five dollars, a hundred dollars. I don't know who wrote it. It was Bruce Valanche or somebody else. Could have been Willem for all we know. I have no idea. Or she stole it from another queen. She needs to give him credit. It yeah. was funny. Yes, it was hilarious. And it is, as I quote, because I'm reading it because I fortunately found an article that it was written down in. Um, Soju, it's a shame your career hasn't exploded like your cyst. Tell me really quick, did it K-pop? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Just fuck. Man, that was just so just oh, uh, like yeah. <laughs> again, if you didn't write it, like kudos to whoever wrote it for you or gave it you part for it. Yes, it it was like amazing. So my yeah. steps out of the whole thing was just to that read because that was one of my the best reads of the whole season. <laughs> just mm -hmm. I know Soji wasn't around when they did the reading thing. Um, and we all know Nina wasn't the greatest at it because she had to kind of, she was talking to Rude, like getting her stuff like, nope, no, 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 no. So congrats, Miss Nina. That was, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, she finally got a good read in. Yes. Um, so for me, uh, oddly, I wasn't expecting this. My snaps go to Brooklyn and Vanessa uh, for the realness, like for their composure and how they handled themselves and the spoiler alert reveal that they are not dating anymore mm -hmm. they kept this charade going all the way until through the filming until this actually aired yeah and the reason i say it that way is because brooklyn reveals that they dated for four months after airing okay so if you stopped airing in june then it was july august september october it was about october mid-october beginning of october end of october when y'all broke up so that means 
November, December, January, February, March, April, May, for almost seven more months, you kept up this whole thing about the Brangy thing and the show romance and the situ situation, mm -hmm. situation, whatever the fuck you call it. So, like, I was really proud of the fact that they realized like this makes good television and we're just going to keep rolling with it all the way until they get to the reunion and then they drop the bomb and R R R must have knew. Because, of course, not only is the question a plant, but the way it was approached yeah. was kind of delicate. Mm -hmm. And that's when Brooklyn says, we are not dating anymore. We we did for four months after the show and then we stopped. And I was like, oh, and I think Vanjie's still like going through it. Like, I think she honestly really likes Brooklyn. I like, has feelings yeah. for her, yeah. wants to date. And Brooklyn was amazingly honest and simply said, I like my freedom. Mm hmm. And, you know, uh, like I talked about last night, I was like, here's the thing. They're girls. They're touring. Like, they they have more dick and ass thrown at them at every instance <laughs> that they cannot <laughs> really kind of pass up at this moment in their life. <laughs> so, if, honey, if you're going to sow your oats, you're going to sow them all over the world. You are going to Johnny Appleseed the fuck out of everything <laughs> because you just are going to put it everywhere. Everywhere. That's just the way it is. I mean, you know, I was explaining about like in the early seasons, the fans that want to sleep with the queens got called race chasers. Hence, Alaska wrote a song called Race Chaser, like oh which then God. became the theme song of their podcast. Like, I mean, it's been this whole thing. And, and the early queens figured out in the first couple of seasons that there are fans out there that are literally trying to sleep with all the queens or with like specific queens from certain seasons. Mm. Like, I know people are crazy. So the fact that I mean, that Brooklyn owned and said, like, I'm an independent person and I like to have my freedom and this and that. I was like, well, yeah, it makes sense. Brooklyn also was very honest and said flat out that she hasn't dated a whole lot and that she has never dated a queen and she puts up walls and barriers. Like, I just thought it was real. I thought it was very talk, authentic between one them. of the things I kind of got from the whole talk is I think that um, Vanessa wants a monogamous relationship and mm -hmm. And um, Brooklyn does not. Well, I hate to say it, but Vanessa definitely came across as like a Latina, Puerto Rican, like hot tempered. I have one man in my life. Don't fuck with him. Like kind of stereotype of, of like love. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I was thinking Brooklyn was like, I don't have time for this. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't want to feel like bound i'm not yeah. i'm not that kind of a person and i think there's nothing wrong with that that's what dating is about is finding out what another person's like and mm -hmm. notably you know they live separately and so they weren't necessarily always together so i like that brooklyn said we tried and yeah. it just, and it did not work out and then rue you know kind of takes the 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 wine cork skewer and just twists it a full turn and says <laughs> you know well, who ended it and Brooklyn reveals that she did, which I thought, well, it's obvious that she did because she's doing most of the talking and Vanessa isn't saying much and she's looking very sad and sullen. So, you know, but they did. They had, a, I, mm -hmm. you know, I agree with what Mark said in the live chat. They were adults about the whole thing, even the ending. They genuinely care for each other and want good things for each other. And I, I believe that. I think that that's why I think Vanessa is still pining a little for Brooklyn. But, you know, Brooklyn's like, maybe in the future, I don't know. And I think, I honestly think that Brooklyn's like the world is my oyster right now. And I am not <laughs> ready to, to settle. And Vanessa's already world toured once from the previous mm -hmm. season, even though the, she was the first one to go home, she's already had all the notoriety and all the rest of that stuff. So right. I think she's basically looking at this and going, I got, I got my whole next year ahead of me till the next season comes up, you know? Mm -hmm. and so you know how the, how the, how the finale went, she might have a crown on her head. That's true. That could be yeah. a whole other thing. And oh, so someone recently posted some interesting pictures online of Brooklyn and Nina smooching. I'm just saying Can't it wasn't like crazy. tongue down the throat. <laughs> it wasn't crazy, but I thought, well, wouldn't that be a fine how to do <laughs> if a former EOY and a later EOI ended up <laughs> not only being very good Judy friends, but then also guy kind and geeky and mm -hmm. became a, a weird uh, power couple. I will say something kind of funny because it just kind of caught me off guard. So during the whole, um, uh, 
so they had like the queens like they've had trios of the queens like interviewing like prior to the finale and of the, one of the trios was evie nina west and brooklyn and i just want to say this now because i want to put it on the record like um nina kind of had a man spread going on and i wasn't mad at what i was seeing hi ronnie <laughs> I was definitely not, I was definitely um, not like, I was like, oh, okay. There's some, there's some, not that that's what like Brooklyn looks for, but it was just very, just, it just caught me off guard. Like there was a lot of man spread on, on Nina. Now I know Nina is a bigger, bigger person. She's not big, big, but she's biggish, you know? Um, so, but that man spread was like, <laughs> well, to be fair, she is a, she is an Ohio country boy. I know, like she from she from farmland, so she has those moments. Uh huh. Now Mark says in the live girl. chat, right, right. <laughs> Nina's a meaty girl, and I'm like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. But um, I'm now searching for this photo. I wish I had like linked it or saved it and sent it to you, Damon, because I think like I just broke the internet for some people with this <laughs> comment. Um, it might be on her Instagram. Let me see if I can uh, find it. Like, I just remember uh -huh. seeing it briefly and was like, whoa. Oh, like, what? Now that would like, be something. But I will, I, I agree with you as you kind of keep looking for it. I do admit that I liked the way that they approached and talked about the the whole like relationship. Cause we knew it was gonna be brought up if they were together or not. We knew that it was gonna be a part of the, the, the reunion. Cause there was, you know, if there was a possibility that they were still together, we're gonna wanna know that. Everyone's gonna wanna know that. Right. Um, and I like that they, at least, especially Brooklyn was very like, these are the facts. This is how it went down. We understood, we respect each other, we still care for each other, we still love each other, we just couldn't stay together. And sometimes, again, that's the best way to look at it. They could have tried to make it work and ended up make, hurting them, themselves in, in the long run, you know? So I'm glad that they had the understanding to essentially make a mutual decision. I'm assuming it was mutual, maybe not, who knows. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that Vanessa kind of has a a hurt still from it. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing per se, but I think it's probably a thing. And maybe once this year is up, if or two or so, maybe we'll find them back together. You know, when they can maybe settle down after all of this has gone on. But again, uh, especially a Rue girl. The 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 job I hate to say it is never done, and you're probably going to be touring a lot. You're probably going to be going everywhere a lot. You you don't normally just go back to your hometown and go back to doing what you were doing. Um, and hell, some of the girls like I mean, I'm sure Brooklyn probably was touring well before you know this all went down. You know, so it's that's very much a wait and see. Right. I would love to know what happens. For sure. Well, yeah, I mean, and I think that you're right in saying about, well, what if it's, you know, if there's a specific year mm -hmm. that should pass as far as time goes by before, you know, a decision is made. Um, yeah. You know, so. Oh, uh, see, I think it's from, yeah, this, this is kind of recent but this isn't the picture i'll if i end up seeing it i'm pretty sure it's from when nina and brooklyn were at ross okay and that was a couple weeks ago hmm. yeah five weeks ago so we're talking about a month and a half ago but i mean it just could be that they're you know very good judies you know and that they're best friends with each other and that's just all there is they can you know they're they have that closeness of that bond that you know there is an intimacy but it's not a sexual intimacy it's just a thing um yeah i don't i don't know so we will kind of see how that uh plays itself out i guess in in 
in that case. But I thought that their relationship, like the way they handled it was very real and I very much appreciated it. So that's mm -hmm. how I feel about that um, in that case. So moving on, Damon, your eye rolls. <laughs> Okay, I have to give the hugest of fucking eye rolls to the fucking product placement in this episode. The buy at the near the end of the episode that seemed so fucking forced, so unrelated to anything that was going on at the time. And on top of it, they didn't add it, like they gave the, the lines to to Vanjie and, and Mercedes. And I just want to be like, who, who, who came up with this? Like who decided to do all this? Not that, you know, like we said, Vanjie probably, you know, of the Queens to get this, those are the two that probably had the worst time with like the Rachel Maddow, um, like teleprompter reading challenge that they did a while back mini challenge. And to give this to those two, because I'm I know they didn't learn this shit, um, just seemed kind of stupid and and inappropriate and almost forced. And it just it just sucked. Like I, I guess they had to get the money somewhere, but like God, that was just so awful. It was so fucking awful. Like I, I roll it because I just it. I know, yeah, you need sponsors and you need sponsorships. Money is out there, blah, blah, blah. But it's just... Excuse me. It just felt so oh, stupid and, and not insensitive, but just didn't feel like it was necessary. Mm -hmm. If you had done at the beginning, like the product placement and maybe close it off with all of the queens getting a thing to buy and having a sip. I wouldn't, I would have probably still hated it, but at least it would have been, at least been like somewhat like in line with something, you know? Right. Yeah. That was weird. Like the way it, it just popped up and I was confused because I didn't realize what the product was. Cause I heard the name buy and I was like, bye, <laughs> like bye girl. Like what? I don't. And then they like do that weird pan down shot and they show it sitting there just random like mm -hmm. on a little box or whatever. And I was like, oh, B-A-I, bye. Like the beverage that everybody already knows about. So like I was kind of confused by it. And I thought, yeah, it's weird. Like why didn't you have it available for all the girls with straws to sip out of, to stay mm -hmm. hydrated throughout the whole show? Like that would have been an obvious product placement endorsement and like – but appropriate. but but appropriately subtle. So then, when it comes back around and Vanjie saying thank you as the sponsorship, you'd be like, "Yeah, girl, we know. Like we already saw it." As opposed to what the fuck is yeah. that about? What was this? What is this? What's going on? Why are you here? What is this? Why is this? Why is this drink suddenly on stage? Like, <laughs> right? Why are these queens suddenly talking about something that literally just poofed into into existence on a stage? Yeah, like yeah, it was uh. It was strange to see the least. Oh my god! And I just oh, I just it. I don't. I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Uh, so my eye rolls are for two very specific things. One, Kahana drama. Mm-hmm. Whatever Who? girl. That's all I got to say. Whatever girl. Who? Yeah. I. I just. I... I didn't even know what they were talking about. I was like, of all the things that were discussed at the entire reunion, this was the one where I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, if the product placement alone wasn't a, wait, what the hell's going on? This was worse. This was, wait, you, who did what to who? Who, when, when did what happen? And why does nobody seem to know about this? And like, I was like, apparently the Queens were aware, but that was like, oh, that's because y'all were probably connected like in a private chat of some sort. None of us know about this. Like, I didn't know that Mercedes apparently posted a thing before the thing, and then Kahana was mad, and she got her feelings hurt, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about this. Yeah. My second set of eye rolls are for not your real faces. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I am not happy 
about these queens coming to the reunion and having other people paint them. Oh. Watch the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Uh huh. Nina West. You had someone paint your face. Mm hmm. Why, girl? Why you feel you got to have someone paint your face? You're not in top four. You're not <laughs> attempting to win the crown. <laughs> I realize you want to look pretty. I'm very confused. Do you not want to look busted like Ahana? I get it. Like, come on. I just... I, I, a few of the girls in the backstage videos when you watch it mm -hmm. for the reunion are getting interviewed and they're having their faces fainted by somebody else. They hired yeah. talent to paint them. Mm -hmm. Biggest fucking eye rolls of the entire season. That's what I have. I'm like, uh -huh. why would you do that? Especially if you're not a top four. If you are Silky, if you are Brooklyn, if you are Evie, if you are Akira, and you have the potential to win, I will give you one very small like hall pass on that purely uh -huh. because you are trying to put your best foot forward and attempt to win. But the uh -huh. rest of y'all, I get that you want to look pretty, but why are you spending money on somebody else paying your mug? Is this person paying your mug everywhere you go for the rest of your life? When you travel the world where you go everywhere? Huh? I don't understand that. Not at all. <laughs> highly, highly, highly disappointed. Could not believe Very it. Very odd. It was, was like I don't understand why you're why they were doing that. Hmm. <laughs> it just it really peeved me. The moment I first saw it, I was like, "Wait, what? Why is this person applying makeup on your face? <laughs> like, this is not a video shoot. This is not like, like you know, like you're not doing a music video. Like you're not in a film. You're not doing a like you know a guest cameo. It's like, I was just I did not understand why." The queens for the for the reunion were getting painted by somebody else. Like either you can do the craft know. or you can't. It's that simple. And I think Nina can paint a mug. So I was confused as to why. And I'm focusing on her specifically because she was the one that shocked me more than others. And then I started paying attention that she wasn't the only one that had someone come in and paint their face. And I was like, hold up. What is going on? What are you doing? What are you doing? Because I'm what? pretty sure that shit was not free. Yeah. So last I knew you did not win a hundred thousand K girl. So why are you spending somebody to put your face on you? Like I just uh, was very, 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 very confused. Girl. I'm just saying, like, no, I don't no, no, hate no. the Queens. I'm just befuddled. I'm confused. I'm bewildered. I'm kind of beside myself because I'm like the whole point of this show season. The competition is to prove that you are the world's next drag superstar. You should be able to kind of do all of it. And the mug that you put on for the reunion should not be all that different than any other mug that you do. Now, if you need help with appliques, like with prosthetics, with things that you don't normally do, I can understand that. But why wouldn't you save that for the finale, not for like the reunion? Like, I'm just... Yeah. Did not understand. Did not. Did not. Did not. Did not. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't know what that was at. What is this? Mark says, this is the new designer outfits to be on Drag Race. Someone else paints you for the finale. Like someone else's designs and creates all your looks on the show in the first place. Mm. Fuck that noise. <laughs> no, because it's not fair because then we're recreating a class of system we've already had this discussion and, and michelle has said it repeatedly you do not have to have money to be on drag race or necessarily to win drag race does it help yes and it does give you an unfair advantage but they don't pick queens to compete because of their money they pick them because of their talent so mm -hmm. if you decide to like take a third mortgage out on your home <laughs> like put yourself into debt to have these outfits to slay the runway. That's True. on you. Like that's a decision that you make. Yeah. So yes, queens that are more seasoned that have more under their belt that I don't know, auditioned nine times might have already <laughs> banked some coin or some stuff strategically to be able to get on the show, to be ready 
yes, you have a short amount of time to pull looks and stuff together, but it's like, come on. Yeah. So I just, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, should, they restrict, would be... should they restrict the girls spending thousands of dollars on clothes for the show? That's actually a good question. Like, and I want to think in my mind, I want to say no. Cause it's not going to be just the clothes you bring. Like as we've found out, like you can get pretty far making your own, own outfits, like here, there, and everywhere. Um, uh, Monique Hart is a perfect example of that. You know, she pretty much brought fabric and made stuff. Just made fabric. She made outfits to get on the show. Right. Um, so I think again, a queen to be on for a queen to be on this show, you need to have all of the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. Da 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 da. And you also need to have some abilities. You need to be able to act. You need to be able to sing. You need to be able to improv. You need to be able to dance. Like I hate to say it, you, and you also need to be able to sew. You kind of need those traits as well. And impersonate. In to, yeah, and impersonate. So you need for to have all those things together. Yeah, like there are things that you kind of already need to know. Yeah, because girl we know the show we know what's coming you know everything that's going to be happening so like you have to be prepared for it yeah um again it's one of those things where it's not going to be just what you wear that gets you through it's not going to be just how well you perform that's going to get you through you cannot i repeat cannot lip sync for your life and get through the show there is a top of maybe four Mm -hmm. lip syncs for your life. If you end up in the bottom three, four, every, you know, in the first episode, second episode, third episode, and fourth episode, one of those, if you make it all the way to that fourth episode, you better be like fucking jump in front of the ceiling and shit in order for you to stay. Like, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, and that's, I highly doubt that's going to happen. I've, it's rare rare, if not, I think impossible for a queen to make it past four lip syncs for your life. Like, that is fact. Um, so you can't just go on performance alone. You can't just go on runway alone. So you can give awesome looks, but if you're awful in acting and and are the singing challenges, are the, the snatch game or anything like that, you're probably going to get in the bottom and you're probably going to go home. Like, that's just the way it is. You know, a to me, a good example of a queen that did good in a her own way to me was like a was Sasha Valor. Was she a great singer? Probably not. Was she an awesome writer? Probably not. But she was a decent performer. She had a good like tongue, but she also did things in her own way, which helped her throughout the, the, the season. Her season. So I don't think you should restrict the queens to just like restrict their financial things because it's not going to be just money that's going to get you through. That may work on, say, an all stars, but, and that's getting a big maybe for that. Hello. There you are. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> Were you here the whole time? Yeah. Okay. So apparently I'm the one that let, lost internet and then left and now I'm back. <laughs> Hi, Tubbs. Sorry, by the way. Um, I kind of kept talking. I don't know. I'm assuming it's still as I can looking at the, the live chat. I can see it. <laughs> What's interesting is you kept talking the entire time, but on my end, it because I disconnected, it looked like you froze. So I was mm. like, Damon, you okay? Blah, blah, blah. Well, yes, we're having an issue. And then all of a sudden it's like, bloop, 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 like nothing's working. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, that's, uh, we'll see. 
yeah, yeah. I don't care about that. Stop yelling at me about that. Anyways, but I I I, I agree with this whole you know your your eye rolls because I did see that during the behind the scene thing that it caught me off guard. I was like, why are the queens getting done up in other people like with other people like getting doing their makeup? And I was like, and and when it wasn't consistent, that's when it caught, like I was like, okay, well, okay, there's something going on, and. Again, if you got the coin, so be it, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I think it's kind of not shady, but just kind of just weird and wrong for a queen to not be able to do her own stuff. Like, not I, do I, her I, own stuff. I just something, an idea just occurred to me, and I will say this, and this is not me defending Nina because I'm a big supporter of hers. As a former EOY, she might have been like, you know what, this is big time. I want to look good, so I'm going to hire some talent. But what she doesn't mm -hmm. realize is that from the outside, it's kind of looking like, yeah, but why? Like, do you not trust yourself enough to put on a good mug? Like, what's that about? Yeah. So, I don't know. Seems a little strange, a little hanky to me. But So, that's basically it for Reunited. Meh. It was okay. Like, yeah. like very, said, very, was... very minimal high points for me. Yeah. Like, I think, um, you know, it, it, was, it was a good reunited we we didn't have the drama of like last season with you know one of the girls literally walking off stage or anything like that and all the tears and and what have you we had some emotional moments especially from evie but we didn't have a whole lot of like drama drama you know this was akin to like a maybe a season seven season eight like reunion kind of thing where like mm -hmm. it's they're having fun it's glad that they're back together and right but some stuff did need to get aired and i'm glad that they did it but Nah. Okay, so it is uh, Sunday the 26th is coming Thursday night. It will be the finale. I will be back home after work. I will probably be going to the local gay bar so I can actually see the episode live in a smoky bar where I don't want to mm -hmm. be just because <laughs> I'm not going to wait until Saturday for iTunes to finally upload the damn episode. <laughs> just saying. Screw that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we just have a couple days left. So, uh, I was asked last night how I feel about the top four, who I want to win. And my answer was not silky. <laughs> I'm just saying like, I, that's how I answered it. I was like, I am fine with the, any of the other three winning. Honestly, I just don't want silky to win. I actually want her to go out in the first round. I want three rounds, two Queens, then two Queens, then the top two Queens. I want silky to go out in the first round. Just get it over with. I'm, I'm done with this. Like done with her mm -hmm. done with all of it not that i never want to see her again but i really need a break like like i really feel like you forced me to drink that kool-aid i didn't like that cool blade i don't care for that flavor it was extra super sick and sweetening and like now my insulin sugar is through the roof and i am gonna go into a fucking diabetic coma because you force fed me this shit stop it <laughs> so i need a different caver <laughs> give me the purple drink like <laughs> okay. yeah so like I so honestly, um, I really think I really feel this way. Um, I would be okay with Brooklyn or Akira or Evie winning. My mm -hmm. favorite choice is Evie because I mm -hmm. want I want spooky, odd, kooky back. I want uh, we've had it with Sharon. It's been a while. Not that we need to cycle these things, but Akira. She's okay. I hate to say that she reminds me of Kennedy Davenport. She reminds me of like. Yeah, She's not really delivering all that much different. Yeah. For me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brooklyn. I don't know. Like, and I don't think she's going to win because if you watch her red carpet interviews for the finale, she's very weirdly like, like pulled back personality wise and was like, I don't know. I'm just so honored to be here and I can't believe it. And I made it all this way. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And it's such an honor. And, and, you know, and uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, who do you want to win? Well, I, you know, I, I'm good. And I'm just with whatever. And I was like, what, what, where's the fight girl? Like what happened to you? Like, I don't want you winning if you're not there to draw blood. Not mm -hmm. literally, but come on. Like, yeah, you are a former pageant competitor. I'm so lost on her mm -hmm. all of a sudden. I was like, you are pretty. You are nice. You are like talented, but mm. I want someone who's going to well represent for a year. And now I don't feel that way about you, which is very strange. I didn't expect that. But watching her like behavior towards the end, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. like, 
I'm so with you, I'm kind of on the same boat. I don't want to say necessarily anyone but but Silky, but I definitely don't want Silky. Like, no, no Silky. Like what would be perfect in my opinion is Evie and Silky in the first round. Evie sends Silky home. Bye, girl. Mm -hmm. We're done. Thank you for playing. Move on. That would be good. I would like that. And then from there, between Akira and Brooklyn, <laughs> that would be very interesting as a showdown. Yeah. It's something I don't, we hadn't seen before. I, and I don't know who would win that necessarily because Brooklyn obviously can dance. Uh huh. Akira, I think, is really good at lip syncing. I see them both pulling stunts because mm -hmm. that's now apparently the modern expectation. Um, so, whoa. Yeah. Now, now, would it be interesting to have a three way th again? Sure. <laughs> that would be interesting. No. But I want, I want, like, I, I hate to say it, I want done, done, done. Like, I want, I, two, I agree. Two, and then two. Like, I just, I want the whole, to me, the three way thing from last season was to me a total um, cop out. Yeah, cop out because we wanted to keep her because we kind of wanted to keep Eureka, so everyone would think that a big girl would win. Mm -hmm. And then you somehow gave it to the twenty-something-year-old little thin New Yorker who apparently has fashion sense. Right. Um, I will say this: What if we get a repeat of Evie and Brooklyn at the top two? See, that would be interesting because then they... technically Rue would be quote unquote forced to pick one finally. Mm -hmm. So that could be interesting if that's the top two. Yeah. As much as I love Akiria, I could see that being a thing. Like I could see Brooklyn winning out against her. Mm -hmm. I don't see Silky winning out against her. I'm just gonna put I that don't see Silky there. beating anybody. Also true. Unless something has changed in the past year or so. Because it's become pretty clear, like, anyway, it's, it's just, I, I'm on the same boat, I think, as you. I would be fine with any of them winning. I would love it if Evie won. I would be okay if Brooklyn won. Um, and I would be okay if Akira won. Like, like, Evie is my first choice. Brooklyn is probably my second choice. And Akira is my third choice. Okay, I'm like, I'm right yeah. there with you on that. Like in a ranking order, I fully agree. Yeah. But, and yeah. this is the thing. This is what it comes down to. Only one out of the four would I be mad at if they won. Based on what I know today, is yeah. it possible that Silky could pull a clown car out of her hoochie and like amaze <laughs> the shit out of us in the finale? Absolutely. I just yeah. don't in past history see that possible. Agreed. So, if it happens, um, I will. I will give. I, I will give her her props for her props. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe she is a hidden like black horse lip sync assassin, and none of us see it coming because she lip synced once and she did so abysmal, and yet sent Nina home. That we just can't ah. foresee the, the the predictability of her like really, really, really slaying twice. Because mm -hmm. remember, in order to win overall, you would have to slay twice if True. the rules have not changed that last from last year to this year or previous years you have to lip sync once and then you have to lip sync again so True. you got to be able to you got to be able to pull out the stunts twice mm -hmm. do it all so mm -hmm. we will see how this all plays out in the meantime if you would like to get in touch with us there are plenty of ways to do that first of all you can go to cubsoutloud.com and you can comment on our blog you can send us an email to cubsoutloud at gmail.com you can also leave us a voicemail at 361 that's col talk also known as 361-265-8255 social media wise just type in cubs out loud as one word uh instagram facebook twitter youtube all that jazz if you want to join our chat online about RuPaul stuff, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M hyphen C-O-L-D-R to join us where we talk about the current season of Drag Race and basically everything all year long about Drag Race. Because uh, we're actually going to be taking a hiatus from like doing this regular show probably for a while because summer's mm -hmm. come and it ain't going to be airing. Thank God. Um, 
Because we've only been doing it for almost six months now uh, on top of the regular season. So we would like a break. Thank you very much. It's kind of like school's out. Uh, <laughs> so, but anyways, we'll still continue to chat because right now everyone's talking about who's doing what pride and who's excited about to go to see with Queen. So yeah, that continues on. If you would like to support Cubs Out Loud, there's plenty of ways to do that. Uh, you can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and you can buy yourself some merch there. You can get a cup, you can get a purse, you can get stuff with our uh, Tea Time Drag Race logo, or you could get something like a fabulous hat that's just regular Cubs Out Loud, a consent shirt, um, you know, as Damon has on the one for pups. Yeah, and I have the one for bears, and we're about to release a new one, which is not all that uh, secretive because we actually talked about it on air previously. So if you are, uh, and of course, if you're a patron, you'll already know. Yes. Come this week. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're looking to have that come out very soon, and we're excited about that. Um, and in our consent line, which is fine. By the way, I wore this shirt out today when we were shopping here. And uh -huh. the place that we got lunch, the woman complimented me as I was paying for my transaction. She's like, by the way, best shirt I've seen today. Yes. <laughs> that was like, oh, well, thank you. Was like, oh. <laughs> so it was a proud moment. Um, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud as we were discussing. So basically all of the uh, video shows that we're doing, so the pre's and post shows are kind of being edited out. Uh, so if you get the audio feed, you're missing the extra bookend stuff. And if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, you're also going to be missing some of that stuff because patrons are going to have like, they have full, like full unedited. So they, they get to see all the, edited, the craziness. Edited, yeah. 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 Uh, and it could be, you know, uh, pretty much, I believe, as Jeff keeps referring, like any amount that you want to donate. But if it's at least a minimum of a dollar a month, there's like rewards uh, from there going mm -hmm. out. So uh, and we have a new idea for another shirt that we're going to be releasing soon uh, that perhaps the uh, longstanding patrons uh, who are about to get a $20 gift card Zazzle reward mm -hmm. may spend that on a new shirt. We'll see. Uh, also, if you would like to promote COL, there's lots of ways to do it. You can rate us on iTunes. You can leave a comment. You could subscribe on Google Play Podcasts. Pretty much like let other people know about the show. Uh, Google, uh, Cubs Out Loud Drag Race has its own audio feed as, as terms of a podcast. So just be aware of that. True. And um, if you would like to get in touch with us, there's plenty of ways to do that. Damon, how would they reach out and make contact with you? If you wish to reach out and touch me, and I know you do, you can always do you can do so by contacting me at Theater Cup 79 on our most bear related sites and also on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra, that's U-M-B-R-A at Twitter. Uh so Sorry, I was replying to live chat. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. And with that, uh, we are going to say goodbye for now. And we're going to go to the moon. And hopefully we will chat with you all soon. Because we will have uh, a winner, finally. Finally! <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, of course. And all with that. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.